Yes, guys, standard problem number 4. Grant Limited granted 500 options to each of its 2,500 employees in 2005 at an exercise price of 50 rupees when the market price was the same. When your exercise price and market price is the same, that means the intrinsic value of the option is 0. So that means there should be a fair value which should be given. Continue reading. Contractual life, that is the vesting period and exercise period of the option granted is 6 years. Being vesting 3 years and exercise period also being 3 years. Expected life is only 5 years and the expected annual forfeitures are estimated at 3%. Now what is this expected annual forfeitures? Expected annual forfeitures means, let's say I am starting with 100 options in year 0. By the time I come to year 1, it will be 100 into 3% forfeiture. So out of 100%, if 3% are gone, balance will be left out as 97% only. Coming to year 2. 100 options, first year already reduced by 97%, this is first year options. Second year again 3% decline, again multiplied by 97%. Check to year 3. 100 into 97% is the first year options. 3% forfeited again in the second year. And for the third year another 97%. This can simply be written as 100 into 97% power 1, 100 into 0.97, you can write as 0.97 power 2, 100 into 0.97 power 3. It's a multiplication of 3.97%. So that is what he meant when he said the expected annual forfeitures are 3%. Annual forfeitures means it is every year. Per annum 3%. Fair value of the option is arrived at 15 rupees and the actual for features were 5% in 2005. 2005 is the first year. Now, however, at the end of 2005, the management of Grant Limited still expects that the annual for feature will average only 3% for the, over the entire vesting period. That means though the actual for features are 5% in the first year, the management is saying the forfeitures will reduce in the next subsequent years, year 2 and year 3 in such a way that it will average to 3% over the 3 years vesting. That means I will still have to consider this 100 into 0.97% whole cube for the, uh, even though the actual forfeitures were actually 5%. Continue reading. During 2006, the management however revised its estimates and the estimated forfeitures at 10% per annum. Very clearly underline that statement. It revises its estimate, revises its estimated future for features at 10% per annum. There is some significance which is attached to those simple words which are given there. Of the 2500 employees, 1900 employees completed the 3 years of vesting. Year 3 no estimates. Year 3 actual for, actually they have got vested. 1900 employees actually vested it. 1000 employees exercised their option to obtain the shares in pursuance of the scheme in 2009 and 500 op employees exercised in 2010. Rights of the remaining employees expire unexercised at the end of 2010. The fair face value of the share is 10 rupees. Show necessary journal entries with suitable notations working should form part of your answer. Now, if you have understood this part, how we, how we calculated this, we can continue solving now. Now, when, did the, when were the options granted? 2005. So, 3 years of vesting period is given to you. That is the vesting condition. So, I will write my 3 years like this. 2005, first year. 2006, second year. 2007, third year. These are my 3 years to be calculated for the provisions. Number of options expected to vest. Let's start. First of all, how many number of options were given to us? 500 options to each of the 2500 employees. So, 2500 employees, each employee gets 500 options. These were the number of options existing. Continue reading. After the fair value is given, then you read. Fair value of option is arrived at 15. Actual for features in 2005 
were 5 percent. However, at the end of 2005, the management of Grant Limited still expects that the annual forfeitures will average to 3 percent over the entire vesting period. Though the actual forfeitures are 5 percent, now he is saying that still it will average to only 3 percent. When it is averaging to 3 percent, it should be 0.97 percent whole cube, sorry 0.97 whole cube. 0.97 for year 1, 0.97 for year 2, 0.97 for year 3. So at the end of the vesting period, how many options will be left out? 0.97% whole cube. 97% into 97% into 97%. Continue for the second year also. Let's try to fill up even the second year now. During 2010, sorry, during 2006, the management revises its estimated forfeiture rate at 10% per annum. Guys, during 2006, now what is his estimate regarding? I already know one year which is actuals. 2005, already 5% have got forfeited. That is the first thing that we already know. Now, during 2006, he is estimating. Then his estimate should be for 2006 as well as 2007. And such an estimate is 5% per annum, sorry, 10% per annum, he said. So, how do we calculate? I have 2,500 employees. Each of them was granted 500 options. First year, actual figure, 5% for features, 95% remaining, 0.95. That is year 1. For year 2 and year 3, he is estimating that the annual for features will be 10%. So, 10% in the sense is 90% will remain 0 0.90 whole square, 2006 as well as 2007. So, 2005 actuals. 2006 and 7 estimated for features of 10%. Last year I don't need any estimated for features. I'll get the actual figures. The actual figures 1900 employees have completed 3 years of vesting. 1900 employees they will be receiving 500 options per employee. So that will give you a direct figure. Guys options cannot be in points. So try to round off the options to the nearest rupee. To the nearest number, you can round off the options. 97% into 97% into 97% definitely is not a round figure. Try to round it off to the nearest multiple. Come on. These are the number of options expected to vest. Multiply it with the fair value of options. Fifteen. And we shall arrive at the total employee compensation expense. Total employee compensation expense. should be provided over the vesting period proportionately vesting period in years is 3 years throughout cumulative we see already provided in previous year to be provided in current year. Come on guys, we can fill it up. Multiply guys. Number of options expected to vest into fair value will give you total EC. 
on a cumulative basis the total EC into 1 by 3 is the first year's cumulative second year's cumulative is into 2 by 3 last year's cumulative is into 3 by 3 what is provided in the previous year for the first year will be 0 obviously Yes guys, to be provided in the first year should be 87,4205 Reduce it from the second year cumulative figure 57,4205 This will give us the answer of 39,14,545 Already provided 96,18,750 this will give you 45 lakhs 31,250 I guess 46 lakhs 31,250 46 lakhs 31, <coughs> Once you arrive with this answers, you can go for the journal entries guys, go on.
Yes, guys, with the journal entries in 2005, employee compensation expense to employee stock options outstanding account 57 lakhs 4,205. PNL to EC, transfer that EC which is a nominal account to PNL. 57,4205. Continue for 2006 as well as 2007. You will get the same pair of two entries but the amounts will be different. 2006 the amount is 39,14,545. And last year it is 46 lakhs 31,250. That leaves us with a total ESO of 1, 1 crore 42 lakh 50,000. Yes guys, come to the exercise entries then. If you have passed those 3 years, 2 entries, total 6 entries passed, then come to the exercise entry. Check the exercise. Last third line, 1000 employees exercise their right to obtain the shares vested in pursuance with the ESOP at the end of 2009 and 500 employees exercise their options at the end of 2010. So 2009 and 2010, I have two exercise entries to be written. 2009,000 employees, come on. Bank account, debit. <coughs> Show the calculation, guys. How many employees? 1,000 employees. Each employee existing with 500 options. With an exercise price given in the second line, exercise price per share is 50. ESO outstanding account, 1000 employees, 500 options per employee, fair value of option created as a provision is 15. To equity share capital, 1000 options, so 1000 employees into 500 options into 10 and take the securities premium as balancing figure. Bank two crore fifty lakhs. Yes, outstanding is seventy five lakhs. Equity share capital is fifty lakhs. And finally, the amount of securities premium is two crore seventy five lakhs. What about 2010 then? How many employees exercised in 2010? 500 employees exercised in 2010. 1000 employees if these are the figures. 500 employees exactly half figures you will get. Bank account debit. Here I wrote 2 crore 50 lakhs. So now I have to write half of it. 1 crore 25 lakhs. 500 employees. ESO outstanding account. 
75 lakhs will now be written as 37 lakh 50 thousand. To equity share capital, half of 50 lakhs is 25 lakhs. And finally, securities premium should also be half. One crore thirty seven lakh fifty thousand. Finally, at the end of two thousand ten, there is a lapse. Thousand plus five hundred total fifteen hundred employees exercise the option. Nineteen hundred employees have actually vested. Four hundred employees options lapse. ESA outstanding to general reserve. Fill it up, 500 employees, no, 400 employees, 1500 already exercised, so 400 employees lapsing the option, 500 options per employee, I created a provision of 15, Thirteen lakhs. Check the total of ES outstanding now. Utilize 75 lakhs plus 37 lakh 50 thousand plus 30 lakhs. Total is 1 crore 42 lakh 50 thousand. If you got 1 crore 42 lakh 50 thousand then the answer is absolutely right. Turn to question number 6. Okay, There is a similar question which sounds very very similar but slightly different when it comes to this part. Especially when it comes to this part. Slight difference is there due to the terminology. Just check. At the beginning of year 1, the company has 300 options to each of its 1000 employees having a contractual life of 6 years. Vesting period being 3 years and excise period being 3 years and expected life is 5 years. There is no use for that expected life being there guys excise price being 50 market price being 50 again I can say that there is no intrinsic value so there should be a fair value which is given in the question and expected for features every year is at 3% so again 97% into 97% into 97% the fair value of the options calculated using an option pricing model is 15 same fair value Actual for features during year 1 is 5% and at the end of year 1 the enterprise still expects that the annual for features would average only 3% over 3 years vesting period. So that means same calculations though for first year by you know actual for features was 5% he is expecting that the average for features would be remain at 3% every year. However during year 2 the management decides to Rate the, for, uh, the rate of forfeitures is likely to continue to increase and the expected forfeitures for the entire award, underline that word. And the expected forfeiture rate for the entire award is changed to 6% per year. What does this mean? I have to take for the entire award, means all the 3 years I have to start taking at 0.94 into 0.94 into 0.94 because it is a 6% decline. But in the previous problem, I have taken this at actuals. 
and these two were estimates because he never said that the estimate is for the entire period. Normally when I am standing in year 2, my estimate will be only for the current year and the future period. It cannot be for the previous period because previous period I already know the actual forfeitures. But here he is clearly stating that the expected forfeiture rate for the entire award is converted to 6%. That means all the 3 years I am expecting it to be 6% only. Finally, it is assumed that 840 employees have actually completed 200 employees exercise their right in pursuance of the ESOP at the end of year 2000, year 5 and 600 employees at the end of year 6. Remaining 40 employees, the options are unexercised at the end of contractual life. That is year 6. Take the fair value as rupees 10 and start solving the problem. Start with number of ex options expected to vest. I have 3 years, year 1, year 2 and year 3. Year 1, number of options. 300 options into 1000 employees. 1000 employees into 300 options per employee. Expected forfeiture rate would remain at an average of 3% over the 3 years of vesting. So, 0 0.97 whole cube. Year 2, 1000 into 300 for the entire award, the revised, the estimated for features are revised to 6% for the entire award. So, it should be 0 0.94 whole cube. And finally, 840 employees con completed the 3 years of vesting, 840 into 300. Identify these values, I'm sorry. multiply it with a fair value of 15, already given, identified using option pricing model, we get totally C. Vesting period, it should be taken as 3 years, Those are the number of options expected to vest. Multiplied with the fair value of the options, you get the total employee compensation expense.
Check the accuracy of your calculations guys. Those should be the amount of provisions to be required every year. First year is 13,69,010 rupees. Second year is 11,22,740. And last year is 12,88,250. If you have done till here, then go for the journal entries. Entries and all the three years we have to pass the same entry EC to ESO outstanding and then PNL to EC. The set of two entries all throughout until the vesting date. First year for 13,69,010, second year for 11,22,740. Last year for 12,88,250. <coughs> Same two entries will continue. Exam, try not to write those short forms guys. Write it as employee compensation expense unless and until there is some time constraint for you. If there is a time constraint then you can write it. Evaluator can understand. Go for the exercise entries and uh, the exercise is split into two parts now. First is the exercise of 200 shares and then is the exercise of 600 shares. One is at the end of year 5 and year 6. Year 5, 200 shares. Bank account debit. 200 employees, 300 options per employee. 50 rupees. Year's outstanding account. 200 employees into 300 options per employee into fair value of option. 15 to equity share capital 200 employees into 300 options per employee into 10 rupees securities premium being the balancing figure thirty lakhs. 90,000 eh? 9 lakhs 9 lakhs 6 lakhs security premium being 33 lakhs excise entry at the end of year 6 200 shares excised in year 5 600 shares excised in year 6 600 shares excised in year 6 I can just take 3 times the previous uh, previous entry because this is 200 shares exercised so, 3 times 90 lakhs. Year 
years outstanding account three times nine lakh into three twenty seven lakhs equity share capital instead of two hundred employees six hundred employees now eighteen lakhs finally to securities premium. For 200 employees, it was 33. For 600 employees, it should be 99. Actually, it vested to 840 employees. 200 plus 600, 800 employees exercised. 40 employees lapsed at the end of year 6. Entry should be ESO outstanding account debit to general reserve. Place the figure. 40 employees. Options per employee is 300. Multiplied by fair value 15 rupees. A lakh and 80,000. That is the entry for lapse transfer to general reserve. Yes, guys, check the fifth one. Slightly tricky question, guys, than what we have been doing so far. Following particulars in respect of stock options granted by a company are available. The grant date is 1st April 2008. Number of employees covered are 400 and number of options granted for employee are 60. Nominal value being 100 and exercise price being 125. Shares offered are put into groups. How many shares are offered per employee? 60. Now this 60 are put into groups he is saying. Group 1 covers 20% of the shares offered. That means 60, 60 shares into 20% is 12 shares. Group 2, 40% of the shares offered with a vesting period of 2 years. Now 40% of 60 is 24. Even group 3 is 40% that is 24. What he means to say is, my 60 shares I am splitting into 3 groups. 12, 24 and 24 of which group 1 has a vesting period of 1, group 2 has a vesting period of 2 years and group 3 has a vesting period of 3 years. Fair value of the options under the, gra under the grant date were 10, 12.5 and 14. The position as on 31st March 2009 is given to you. First year 40 employees left. So if 40 employees left they are not even eligible to get the option 1 also. Option 2 and 3 no chance but option 1 also they won't get. Estimated number of employees expected to leave in 2009-10 is 36. Those people who left in 2009-10 they are eligible to get 
group 1 options. But they are not eligible to get group 2 options and group 3 options. Next come to point number C. Number of employees expected to leave that next year in year 3 is 34. These 34 employees will get group 1 options, group 2 options but are not entitled to receive group 3 options at all. Number of employees exercising the group 1 options are 350. Position as on 31st March 2010. Number of employees who left is 35. Estimated number of employees leaving is 30. And number of employees exercising the group 2 is 319. Last one, number of employees who left are 28. Number of employees at the end of the vesting period is 297. And the number of employees exercising the option under group 3 is 295. Options not exercised immediately on vesting were forfeited. Compute the expenses to be recognized every year and show important accounts in the books of both the in books of the company under both the methods. Guys, the first thing understand guys here when I'm talking about the first year where the group one options are vesting during the year. Actually, how many options were vested? Check. I have total 400 employees, 40 employees left. That means remaining 360 employees have actually vested the option. But how many people exercised in first year? Only 350. That means 10 employees did not exercise only. He is clearly putting down in the last second up point. Options not exercised immediately on vesting were forfeited. That means if I go by the normal logic. First year for group 1 options. I have to create a provision for how many employees? 360. Because 40 employees left out of 400. For the balance 360 employees I have to create the employee stock option outstanding account but however when a utilization is done I am using the ESO outstanding only to the extent of 350 10 employees did not exercise the options towards that 10 employees I have to again write off that provision why re why actually creating a provision why actually writing off a provision you can do it by that method also you raise the provision you write off the provision to the extent of 10 otherwise in a simpler sense I can put it saying that why do you create the option, you know, the entire provision for 360? You know that group 1 employees 350 only exercise, create only for 350 employees. That is sufficient for group for the year 1. Year 2 when we come about, year 1 40 employees left, year 2 35 employees left, total employees who left are actually 75. How many employees were there? 400. If 75 employees left, balance employees should be 325 who are eligible to exercise option in group 2. But how many employees actually exercise? 319. That means 6 employees did not exercise the options vested. Towards the 6 employees, I don't want to create any new provision. So what I'll take year 2, I'll directly apply 319 and we'll start calculating the answer. That's an easier way of putting it forward. Yes guys, so let's start. In year 3 also, I'll create only for 295 employees in the group 3. So whatever group is vesting during that current year, we have to think only about the number of options which were exercised. For that year, I will only consider the options exercised. I will not consider the options vested for the year in which such group options are vesting. Come on guys. Your table will not be a little, will be a little bit elaborate guys because there are multiple columns in each year. Three balance sheet dates, 31st March 2009. On the first balance sheet date, how many provisions do I have to create? Group 1, Group 2, Group 3. So here I will write Group 1. Group 2, Group 3. Let's maintain it a bit spacious. Group 1. Second year. Group 1 already vested, already exercised will not come. In the second year, I will have only Group 2 and Group 3. That's it. 
third year I'll have only group 3 because group 2 already got exercised. First year 3 columns, second year 2 columns, last year 1 column. Come on guys, number of options expected to best. How many employees were then? 400. Employees left in first year is 40. But I am saying that number of options ex employees exercising the group is only 350. For this I will create only to the extent of 350 because even if I create 360, towards the end of the year the 10 unexercised employees I have to write it off. Unnecessary to create a provision, write off the provision. Directly created at 350 only. 350 employees under group 1 number of employees, number of options are 12. Group 2. Vesting period is 2 years. 40 employees already left. And number of employees expected to leave next year is 36. 40 plus 36, how many people are expected to leave? 76. So balance employees are only 324. Number of options per employee are 24 options. Last group, 3 years vesting, 40 already left, 36 expected to leave in the next year, 34 expected to leave in the next year. So total number of employees who are expected to leave by the end of year 3 will become 110. So the number of employees will be left is only 290. Come to the year 2 guys, year 2 group 2 are being exercised. How many employees are exercising group 2? 319, direct I'll take. 319 into 24. Group 3, how many employees left in the first year? 40. How many employees left in the second year? 35. Total employees left so far? 75. How many employees are expected to leave next year? 30. 75 plus 30, total 105 expected to leave. So 295 are expected to vest. Last year directly group 3 options ex exercising on 295. 295 into 24 options. Fill this up. I think this is 4200 options.
This guy is check your total ECs. Those should be the total EC. Cumulative for group 1. 1 year vesting 1 by 1. 79,200 into 1 by 2. 97,440 into 1 by 3. 95,700 into 2 by 2. Second year. 99,120 into 2 by 3. Last one 99,120 into 3 by 3. Amounts are 48,600 32,480 95,700 66,080 99,120 Already provided in the previous year, first year's figures will be zeros. So, first year to be provided is 42,000, 48,600, 32,480. Already provided in second year, already provided in the previous year for group 2. Group 2 already provided 48,600, group 3 already provided 32,480. Group two already, group three already provided in second year is ninety no, sixty six eighty zero eight zero. Then you'll get what is to be provided. This is forty seven thousand one hundred. This is thirty three thousand six hundred. This is thirty three thousand zero four zero. Combine the figures guys because this entry will be written on a combined basis only. One, two, three, zero, eight, zero. First year. Second year is eighty one seven hundred. Last year no change thirty three zero four zero. Check your answers guys. Small correction now is that the year 2 is 80,700, not 81,700.
Yes, guys, not the journal entries. What did he ask? He asked you to prepare important ledgers, important accounts in the books of the company. What is the both the method that he's talking about? Both the methods in the sense, if I change the method, I'll create this for 360. Towards the end, I'll write it off for 10 employees again. So your final answers will not change. Your final answers have no change, guys. So let's try to prepare the accounts. Account in the sense, I'm talking about both employee compensation expense account. Yep, as well as employee stock option outstanding account. Employee compensation expense account, only one entries each year and then transfer it to PNL. Employee stock option outstanding card. First create the provision for three years. First year EC two years outstanding. 313 Employee compensation expense one lakh twenty three thousand eighty. Employee compensation expense, you can directly transfer it to PNL on the same day. Balance sheet date it is by PNL 1,23,080 and close it. Not the case with ESO outstanding because ESO outstanding, I'm utilizing it for the exercise of the first options. Group 1 options. How much group 1 options are being used? 42,000. Group 1 options, the stock, the reserve created is 42,000. Entire 42,000 has been utilized now because they have vested in the first year. So on 31st March 09, to share capital and securities premium. You don't know how much is share capital, how much is securities premium. Write a combined entry to share capital and securities premium. Only for the first group options, 42,000. Balance I can carry forward. Balance carried forward to the next year is only the combination of these two. 81,080. 1409 by balance bought down. 81,080 first year provision for group 2 and group 3 options. Again, create 31st March 2010 to ESA outstanding. Year 2, 80,700 option created, provision created. Directly put this to PNL. Eighty thousand seven hundred thirty first March two thousand ten. I've utilized for group two to share capital and securities premium again. How much amount of provision is being utilized? Group two forty eight six hundred first year, thirty three six hundred second year, forty eight six hundred sorry, forty seven one hundred second year. The total is basically. 95,700 balance carried down only group 3 balance only group 3 balance 32,480 plus 33,600 total is 66,080 group 1, group 2 already got exercised Bring down the balance, 1-4-2010. 
only group 3 balance 66,080. Create again last year 31st March 2011 EC to ESO outstanding. Last year only group 3 33,040. Put it to PNL and close it. Utilized at the end of the year, 31st March 2011, the options are exercised to equity share capital and securities premium again. $99,120. That is utilized and that will bring us to the end of the entries or ledger accounts of ES outstanding as well as EC. Observe the debits in ESO outstanding guys. The first year debit was a group 1 options utilized. First year debit equity share capital and securities premium is 42,000 for the group 1 options. Because group 1 options were exercised. Second year whatever I have debited for share capital and securities premium is group 2 options. Group 2 options they have created a provision during group 1 as or year 1 as well as year 2. Year 1 they created 48,600, year 2 they created 47,100. Some combination of both is 95,700. The entire 95,700 was debited in ESO outstanding. We are cancelling it or we are utilizing it. The balance which will be left out at the end of year 2 will be only group 3 options. Because year 1 and year 2 both got vested and exercised. The balance in ESO outstanding at the end of year 2 is only pertaining to group 3. Group 3 created in the first year was 32,480, created in the second year was 33,600. 32,480 for, 32, plus 33,600 is total 66,080. What I have created and again during the year is 33,040. The entire 99,120 will be utilized at the end of the third year.
turn to the qu- turn to question number 7 guys following particulars in respect of stock options granted by employ by the company are available granted being 1st april 2008 number of employees covered are 525 and options granted per employee are 100 vesting condition being continuous employment for 3 years and having a nominal value of 100 rupees per share excise price per share is 125 market price per share on the date of grant is 149 guys if market price is 149 and excise price is 125 your fair your intrinsic value is 24 However, towards the end, he has given you the fair value as 30. My date of vesting is 31st March 2011 and 31st March 2012 being the exercise date. Positions are given to you on 31st March 2009. Number of employees who actually left are 15. Estimated annual rate of departure. First year, 15 gone. Second and third year, he is expecting 2% to leave. So, how do we calculate number of employees 525? Minus 15 into 98% into, into 98%. Two times I have to multiply that is for year 2 as well as year 3. Second year, number of employees who left are 10. Estimated annual rate of departure is 3%. Now how do we calculate? 525 minus employee left in year 1 are 15. Minus employee left in year 2 are 10. Multiplied by third years expected for features are 3% into 97%. Last year 492 straightforward figure. 480 is the number of emplo- uh, employees exercising the option and 12 people are not exercising. Calculate the amount to be recognized as expense as per both the methods, fair value as well as intrinsic. Intrinsic value is only 24. Fair value is 30. So maintain two columns for each year. Thirty first March zero nine. First year thirty one three ten. Second year thirty one three eleven being the third year. Number of options. Expected to vest. Year 1. 525 employees were there. Out of which 15 employees already left in the first year. I am expecting estimated annual rate of departures to be 2%. What first year over. Second year I am expecting 0.98 to remain. Third year again I am expecting only 0.98 to remain. And these employees are entitled to receive options of 100 options per employee multiplied by 100. Year 2. Initially I had 525. 15 left first year. Second year how many left? Number of departures is 10. And estimated rate of departures for the third year is 3%. 0.97. Employees are entitled to 100 options. Last year straight, 492 into 100. Identify the number of employees.
maintain two two columns throughout after that bring them down to fair values intrinsic values 30 fair value 24 intrinsic value One by three, one by three for the first year, two by three, two by three for the second year, and three by three, three by three for the third year.
Check your finances guys. That is all the question asked. What are the expenses to be provided in the current year? Both the methods. So I maintained two columns and started solving both fair value as well as intrinsic value. Yes guys, he is also asking us the accounts to be maintained. So try to maintain two amount columns. One is the fair value and one being the intrinsic value. Fair value, intrinsic value, date. Efficient for EC. Start with the entries on 31st March 09. EC to ES outstanding. First column is fair value. Second column is intrinsic value. Fair value column. First year. 489,800. Intrinsic value 391,840. By P and L Second year, 4,80,200, 3,84,160, put it back to P&L, 4,80,200 and 3,84,160. Bring down this provision for the next year, 1,4,2009. 489, 800 and 391, 31st March 2010, employee compensation expense, 480, Thirty first March two thousand ten, carry forward the balances. 
balance carried down total are 9,70,000 and 7,76,000 carried down the balances to year 3 One four two thousand ten balance brought down. The total provisions are nine lakh seventy and seven lakh seventy six. You don't have to total, guys. You can check these balances here. It will be the same. By employee compensation expense last year thirty first March two thousand ten. Last year how much did you create? Five lakh six thousand and. 4,4,800 Post it even to EC 31st March 2011 Years outstanding 5,6,000 31st March 2011 Put it back to PNL Balance carried down 31st March 11. Fourteen lakh seventy six thousand and eleven lakh eighty thousand eight hundred. Don't totally take your balances directly. Bring down the balance to the next year, one four two thousand eleven. Balance brought down fourteen seventy six thousand and eleven lakh eighty thousand eight hundred. Exercise leaving twelve unexercised options. Balance four eighty are exercise. Four eighty employees exercise on what date? 31st March 2012 to equity share capital and securities premium balance 12 options I have to transfer it to general reserve how much do you transfer to equity share capital 480 employees 480 employees, each one is having 100 options and I am creating a provision at the rate of 30. So 480 into 100 is 48,000, 48,000 into 3. This will be 14,40,000. Next one, 48 employees, sorry, 480 employees, 100 options, 48,000 into 24. 48 into 24 is 11 lakhs. Forty-eight thousand into 24 is 11 lakh 52 thousand. Or else fill up general reserve, write this as balancing figure. General reserve directly you know 12 employees did not gain 100, 100 options per employee. 12 employees into 100 options, 1200. 1200 into 30, 36,000. 1200 into 24? How much? 28,800. That's it. Accounts are tally towards the end. 